Hello everyone. Beautiful day today. Wow, nice cool weather here in sunny Florida. I don't know if you've uh, been out to South Florida right now, but we are getting some beautiful weather. Uh, today we have a great program and uh, we're waiting for our chat room to fill up. I'm sure right about now you are getting your notifications and uh, we will be seeing you in a minute or two. But today is going to be a great program. A program that is going to answer a lot of people's questions. Uh, we're going to be talking about lower back problems. How do you conquer lower back problems? Today we're touching on three important things. Very good. Barkawi, how are you? Risa, nice to have you here. Uh, Paula, nice to have you here. Uh, we got all the chat lines coming in. Great personalities. T. Tina, uh, today's going to be a great program. And we're talking about three different things. We're talking about herniated discs. We're talking about sacroiliac problems and piriformis syndrome. Three very important things we're going to touch on today. What's going to be nice about, guys, you are in a good area right now because I'm going to be answering a lot of your questions, and I'm sure your questions will be answered. Hey, Catherine, how are you? Nice to have you here. Uh, as we fill the chat room up, hello, uh, Jacqueline. Uh, from Reno, Nevada. Let's uh, let me let me know where you guys are from. By the way, go ahead and leave me a little something here so we can let our audience know how far we are traveling worldwide. Uh, how how many beautiful people we have out there tuning in with us right now. So, uh, Alejandro, hello, hello. Um, so again, today's program is about lower back herniated discs, sacroiliac, as well as piriformis. And many of you are going to say, wow, I didn't know that kind of stuff. Well, first, as we look straight ahead, we can see disc herniations. Now, I'm sure that many of us out there have or know people with disc herniations. Hello, Maria from Australia. Hello, Sandy Linder from South Florida. Uh, Paula from Houston, Texas. Nice to have you here. Uh, Teresa from San Diego, California. Uh, the chat room is starting to fill up, which is nice. Um... But let's look right ahead at the disc herniation. There are mainly three to four different kinds of disc herniations. Perth, Australia. Evans from New York. Great personalities from uh, Perth, Australia. Hello. Welcome, guys. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's go right to the meat and potatoes here, and we'll get to some of your questions a little later. Hi, Evans from New York. Uh, if you look ahead, you look at the generation on the left, you look next to it, you look at a prolapse. A prolapse basically means that the inside gel of the, of the disc is actually pushing through more or less like a bulging disc. Uh, an exclusion means that that outside fiber has actually torn, make like a herniated disc, sequestered disc, is when it actually moves it out into a different area. But I want to go over some very important things. Hello, Wafa from California. Uh, go over some very important things. Uh, let's get right to the, the map here. I think this is really good information uh, that I want to share with you. We look at uh, lumbar disc problems. We can see uh, right there, I'm going to go ahead and move this one over here so we can get a little view here. Look on the left here. Look at a normal disc. Look at the outside fibers. Uh, hello, Mansoor from Australia. Uh, you can see the outside fibers called the annular fibrosis surrounds that inner gel, that white substance, which is a nucleus pulposus. That is what's contained in the disc. If you look to the right side, that's a herniated disc. We can see that the inside gel... Uh, the nucleus pulposus makes its way out of those outside fibers, compressing on the nerve root and causing pain. So the key thing to know about an MRI, as we look here to the left, we can see an MRI. If we go up three levels, we can kind of see, I don't have a pointer with me on here, but uh, we can see where that dark bulge is towards the right side of the disc, where it's compressing on the nerve root against the spine there. Now, when you have disc herniations, uh, let's go ahead and see if we can move that for a second, one second. Uh, disc herniations are very, very common, but what we're going to learn today is we're going to find out that just because you have a disc herniation, most of the time, that's not what's causing your pain. And I'm going to show you what is causing your pain. JP from uh, Idaho, nice to have you here. Deb from Nepal. Um, anyways... Just hang with me tight, and I'll get to some of your questions later. But uh, we look at herniated disc. The first thing I want to show you is that when you have a, a disc herniation, the most important thing is that the disc is 
coming back on the posterior part of the vertebrae if it pushes back here where the nerve structures are. Herniations towards the front part of the vertebrae will cause no symptoms. Now, when we look at some, let's look at some exercises because um, I get a lot of different uh, callers and a lot of requests for exercises. And so I wanted to bring these out to you guys. Uh, these exercises to the left are the best exercises and you can make a note, and I want you to go through these with me. Uh, these are the best exercises that you can do for the lower back here. Uh, these are the best exercises when I tell you. If you look at the top left, we can see the hamstring stretch. Now the most important thing about lower back is that when you have tight hamstrings, that is one of the key killers for lower back pain. Hi Kat from Wyoming, nice to have you here. Uh, very important, you can sit on a bed, you can put your, your leg up on the bed, and you can bring your chest to your, to your knee, and as you lean forward, don't ever bob. Uh, that is very important. Most people with low back problems are gonna have tight hamstrings. Um, I like the Superman, if you go down, it's called the, quadru, quadru, the quadruped one, They're the arm leg raise, like the Superman, when you come this way and that way, that helps build core. Uh, cat camel in the upper right is very good. Pet, uh, pelvic tilts. Just laying on your back and lifting your pelvic up, going back down, lifting up, going back down. Uh, those extension exercises, if you see that in the lower right, third from top, uh, like McKenzie. Many of you have seen McKenzie's work, and ideally what we're doing there is that when there is disc herniations and the disc is protruding, let's say, uh, towards the back, as we put the back into extension, okay, as we... As we're laying on our stomach and as we put the back into extension, we are actually trying to bring that disc back forward again. The whole purpose of those McKenzie's. And they've proven that people with disc herniations or actually bulging discs by doing that extension exercise has been helpful. If you look at the ones below, those are called planks. Uh, those planks are actually very good uh, to help build up the inner core called the transverse abdominus muscle. Uh, the... Very important, um, you can do planks when you're on your elbows, keeping the whole back straight. I didn't put a picture up there, but uh, those side planks are very good. That kind of works the, the, the lateral uh, and both lateral sides, uh, as well as deep uh, abdominal muscles. But one very important thing, if you haven't seen uh, one of my videos on the transverse abdominus muscle, and I'm gonna stand up for you, because I'm dressed, I got, my, I got my sweatpants on, but I want you to see on camera, if you look back here, that's right, live healthy, be smart. This is what I wear all the time around here. So you're gonna see me wear this all the time. Okay, and hopefully maybe we'll get a few of these out to some of our subscribers out there later. But what I want you to do, put your fingers on your, on your belly right here, on your abdominal area. And what I want you to do is I want you to take your abdominal region and bring it towards your spine. Pull it in, pull it in towards your spine. Hold it in for about five seconds, release it, good. Pull it in again. Hold it in, five seconds. Come on, pull it out. Hold it in, five seconds. Come on, keep squeezing it, let it out. Now, you just did three of them for me, right? That hurts. You can do it sitting up, you can do it when you're driving, you can do it standing up. What that's gonna do is that's gonna strengthen the deep abdominal uh, muscle called the transverse abdominus, and that's the muscle that strengthens and stabilizes the back area. That's a very, very important thing for people who have herniated discs is to strengthen the abdominus, the rectus abdominus muscle. Very, very important. Now, the bottom left one called the gluteal stretch, that is like a piriformis stretch. Very good for the back. Um, I just want you guys to know something that uh, we're looking at a very small percentage of disc herniations and, di and bulging discs that actually need any type of intervention. Most people with herniated discs and bulging discs your condition is not related to the disc most of the time. Yes, so you will find uh, problems from MRIs where the neurosurgeon, the neurologist, the orthopedic surgeons will say, hey, listen, man, we got to go in and cut. Don't if you don't have to. The three cardinal rules, okay? They're not going to teach you this. Number one, is there atrophy? Atrophy means is the muscle getting smaller? Number two, is the muscle getting weaker? Number three, are you losing reflexes? But most of the time, you're going to have all of those. So 
Those are the three cardinal rules of any type of invasive surgical procedure, and so I wanted to bring that out to you. Now, we're going to move on here because I'm going to go ahead and go through these with you guys, and then we'll come back to your questions. Next thing, let's go ahead and talk about sacral iliac. Now, you see the sacral iliac there? The sacral iliac, and I'll show you on the spine, uh, is basically the lower part of our back, the most common areas, most common problems we have these joints right in here are called the sacroiliac. Here's our sacrum. Here's the ilium, the pure of ilium here. Okay, both sides of the ilium. These are our lumbar spine, the L5 vertebrae being down here. You have discs as we turn around. Okay, but this is our uh, ilium. This is our pelvis, and these are our sacroiliacs. We have the right side. We have. I'm looking at the backwards here, but these say the right and left sides, and. Uh, when you walk, they go back and forth. People talk about anterior pelvic tilt. That means the pelvis is going towards me. If it's posterior pelvic tilt, it's coming back towards you. When you spend a lot of sitting, uh, the sitting puts this into a posterior pelvic tilt like this, and this lumbar lordosis becomes perfectly straight, causing increased load on the discs and causing degenerative joint disease and disc problems. So sacroiliac is the number one problem for lower back. Now. I don't care what anyone tells you. I am telling you that sacroiliac problems is a number one cause of lower back pain because there is so much wear and tear, so many, so much bending. People have weak abdominal muscles. They're overweight. They're sitting like this. Okay, if I scoot back here, you can see my legs. I'm sitting. My hip flexors are contracting. Uh, the 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 abs and most of us are weak. As we get older, we just don't strengthen the, the, the inner deep abs or the deep core and it affects a lot of the pelvic structures and the muscles. So you can see right here on the left the sacroiliac joint uh, as I come up here uh, this right here you can see an injection cortisone a steroid injection many people get steroid injections but they don't tell you they don't tell you that steroids eats away bone steroids causes your sugar level to come out of control uh, steroids can cause a lot of destruction in the body um, and that's why they tell you you can only get X amount per time. Uh, steroid injections are not the answer because steroids are not getting rid of the cause of your problem. They're only reducing inflammation but whatever you're doing from weak core, poor posture, being overweight, uh, having weak stability muscles, a weak buttocks area, uh, weak erector muscles, tight hamstring muscles, all attribute to sacroiliac problems. Now, let's look here. If I show you this, these are some great, well, before I show you that one, let's look at this. This is called Gainsland test. So if you lie in this position and uh, your husband, spouse, friend, boyfriend, girlfriend, you bend that that uh, the good leg okay let's say this is your left sacroiliac he's checking his left sacroiliac here uh, if he is uh, bending the right leg and you're checking the left side and you push down off the table that will stress the sacroiliac and that will cause more pain indicating that that's potentially where your problems coming from now I like to teach you these tests because you can help self-diagnose your problem because a lot of doctors don't even know where these problems are coming from. They're going to look at the disc. They're going to go right to the MRI, take an MRI. You have an MRI disc. They do, they do surgery on your disc and you still have the same problem. So it's very, very important that you understand that. So that is the sacroiliac test. Uh, as we take this away, now you're saying, well, what can I do for it? Uh, look at this right here. Okay, well, one second here. Let me see if I can take this away. One second. Okay, now if you look at this, this exercise right here, uh, this particular one on the left will show you, let's make it bigger if we can. Well, I'll leave that because I'm having a little problem with this chart here. But if you look to the left there, those are two, three, three great exercises you can do for sacroiliac. Uh, just kind of take a look at it. Uh, that will kind of show you uh, basically uh, by bringing the leg out, by bringing it out like this, I can't really show you on here, and putting your foot up there and rotating away from the leg, or just look at those exercises. That will help move the sacroiliac and hopefully start restoring mobility in the sacroiliac to try to get that condition functioning better. Okay, let's go back to 
the piriformis, the last thing we'll talk about here, all right, is the piriformis muscle. The piriformis muscle coming out of the lower back area. Uh, that area, wish I can get rid of that. There I go. That area, uh, piriformis muscle comes uh, is is goes from the uh, sacral sacrum to the hip joint. The sciatic nerve, the biggest, longest, fattest nerve of the body, comes out underneath that nerve. People who have stuff in their back pocket that spends a lot of time sitting, uh, you're generally going to have irritation on that nerve. Now, you can get burning coming down the leg. Pain is usually in the buttocks. The pain does not usually occur in the lower back. So if you're getting pain in your buttocks area, you're not having pain in your lower back, and the pain is going down your leg, you're tingling, numbness, cramping, called sciatica, that potentially is a piriformis problem. Now, if you look at here, the piriformis test, the way uh, that you have to understand it, the piriformis muscle is an externally, external rotator. So basically, if I stand up here and I externally rotate out like this, okay, I'm using that piriformis muscle. I'm trying to show you on myself, usually deep in that buttocks area, chronic, chronic, chronic discomfort, achiness. But if you go ahead and you flex the hip like that fellow's doing, and you abduct it, which goes towards the body, and internally rotate the hip, you do the opposite function, what the piriformis does, that will, that will cause increased pain. So one of the best uh, exercises, uh, I should have it right here. If you look right here, this exercise right here uh, is one of the best for piriformis. All right, a lot of people in yoga will teach you this, basically putting the foot behind there, grabbing that leg and pulling it forward. Uh, that is a great piriformis exercise, great stretch. And I'm telling all my listeners out there, for all lower back problems, do this stretch. Your lower back pain can go away like magic. Also stretch the hamstrings. I want to show you this other piriformis stretch because uh, I think it's important for you to know. Uh, you can look at that right there. And you can see what they're doing here. They're taking the inside of the... I'm like trying to get rid of these little red things that drive me crazy. I don't know why I can't get rid of them. But uh, anyways, there you go. But uh, basically, like I believe this is like the grasshopper. They call it, if I recall... You're taking that front leg, you're, you're bending it forward, and you're leaning forward, and you're really stretching that, that, that butt, that, that ASS. Uh, very important. Pigeon stretch. There you go. You got it. Thank you, JP. I wasn't even looking over here with you guys in the chat and trying to focus so much trying to get the material to you. I will come to your chat in just a second. I'm almost done here. So that is the piriformis stretch. I think it is very, very uh, important. The pigeon stretch, uh, excellent. I don't know how many people out there do yoga, but this is something very, very common they do in yoga. And, uh, you know, when we're looking at these particular problems, uh, these are very, very common conditions. If you just tuned in with us, we talked about the lumbar disc herniations. Uh, we talked about uh, the uh, sacroiliac and the piriformis stretches. This is the lower back here. Uh, so... That is it. I just wanted to bring those three things out to you, okay, because we've already spent uh, about 17, 18 minutes here, and I'm going to go into a couple of uh, questions and answers. We'll do that for you right now, and hopefully we can give you just a little bit of information uh, for you. Okay, um, Paul, talking about thoracic discs, we'll talk about that in another feed. Uh, how much time does it take to repair a herniated disc from the body, Gary? Uh, Gary, uh, nice to see you, Gary. I recognize those arms. Nice to see you with us. Uh, we look at a herniated disc. Understand that all herniations are different. Okay, number one, you have your age. You have your genetic makeup. You have your uh, th what type of shape you're in. you got to look at your occupation. Some people who sit more than others. Uh, I talked about this last night. One of the best things that we can do for lower back pain is make sure that when we're sitting, we use a lumbar pillow. A lumbar pillow, I'm going to show you right now. Let's go ahead and pull it up. Here's a lumbar pillow. I know I'm on black on black, but I'll go ahead and see if I can take this off for you. Here's a lumbar pillow. This pillow supports the lower back area. It allows the lumbar curve to be fulfilled. If I show you here that the lumbar curve goes in like this, and when that lumbar curve is not fulfilled and it starts to straighten out like this, when we sit, remember, when you sit, the... the 
the pelvic rocks back. When it rocks back, the lumbar curve becomes straight. That's when we start developing a lot of lower back problems. A lot of load on the lower back. So the question for you, depending upon the severity of the disc, depending upon your age, the type of occupation you do, some people continue to lift. Some people continue to drive vibration like this all day long. Uh, you need to change positions frequently when you sit. You've got to use a lumbar support pillow. You need to get up more often. And I love these stretches. I'm going to see if I can show you the stretch when I'm sitting down. Let's see if I can cheat a little bit on the camera. Okay, you can see the keyboard there. But if I come back here, you can see me because I can see me. Now, guys, do this with me right now. You're sitting down, cross your leg. Okay, now what I want you to do, I want you to take your chest and bring your chest to your foot. Very few people know this. Take your, bring your chest and bring it to your foot. Okay, feel that left side. I'm, actually, I have my left leg crossed over my right knee. So if we take the chest and lean towards the foot, you're gonna feel the left buttocks really, really stretch. Come on, go for it, guys. Let's do it, let's do it together. Now I tell you, this is one of the best stretches you can do. This can help a tremendous amount of your pain say bye-bye forever. And I honestly mean that. This is one of the most common problems in lower back. Let's do the other one. Let's take your right leg, let's cross it over your left, left knee, okay? Now you'll notice when you do this, one side's gonna be harder than the other because the external rotators, which is the piriformis muscle, uh, you're going to notice are very, very tight on most of us. Now, if you take your right, I'm sorry, if you take your chest and bring it to your foot, you're going to feel the opposite buttocks really stretch, the right side. Let me tell you guys, this burns the shit, excuse my language, it burns the crap out of my butt when I tell you, I know you're crying right now, I know you're not laughing, because this is going to hurt most of you. But this stretch is one of the best, best stretches you'll ever do for the body. When, I, when it comes to lower back, I'm telling you that this is probably one of the best stretches you'll ever do for the body. Now, I know it hurts. Okay, so let's take that for what it's worth. Let me just fix you up here a little bit so you can see me. Uh, let's go on for a couple questions here. How do you strengthen the lower hip muscle, the piriformis? Um, if you're going to, you don't have to strengthen it. That thing is always going to be strong. That's the, the least amount of time. Strengthen the glutes. If you're going to strengthen the glutes, you got to do kickbacks. Okay, if I stand over here and I bring this up, you got to kick back, kick up, kick back. When you kick back, uh, like you're on your stomach, I don't have a, a video here on this, but you got to do kickbacks. Work and concentrate on the buttocks. Now, if you do extensions, let's say you're over a ball, you're laying over a ball. Okay, and you put your hands behind your head and as you're laying on the ball, that big, big fitness ball, and you do back extensions, come up and go back down, come up, go back down. Or if you're on your bed and someone's sitting on your legs and you, do, you come off the bed like this and you extend back, strengthen those lower back muscles, the glute muscles, stretch the hamstring muscles, uh, stretch the hip flexors, okay, which we'll talk on another program. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I know we got so many things coming through here. Sorry guys. I can't move that quick uh, Let's talk about Manny your thoughts doc standing still for periods uh, Commuting to work for example hurts the lower back not overweight and in good shape focusing on posture While exercising and moving never hurts. Yeah, that's a good point. The worst thing we can do is stay in one position Switch put pressure on one leg. Okay, because you got your butt contract. You have the opposite butt contracting the glute medius and then switch back to the other. Always good to stay at movement no matter what we do in the body. Never prolong one position. For example, carpal tunnel syndrome. Keeping your arms out in front of you for neck pain. Uh, you cannot keep those arms up high. Even driving, even using your arms is going to affect and contract the neck area. But if you're doing something for prolonged periods of time, the lower back will start to contract. Uh, thank you, Nikki. Uh, Tony, uh, what can be done with a pinched nerve in the hip area? Uh, we... It's a little more complicated on that. It's a total separate. Uh, uh, you can look at some of my videos. I have some stuff, but I can't really go into that at this point right here. I don't want to lose track here. Uh, Renee, I'm sure you like that piriformis stretch, huh? Uh, good for you. Uh, Aditi here, uh, sir, how cure desiccated disc? My age is 30, your weight's 94 kilograms, suffering uh, a lot. The MRI shows loss of lumbar curve. Uh, if you got a loss of lumbar curve, uh, you need to uh, go to, actually I have a video, a lot of good videos on that. Uh, my main concern with you is don't worry so much about desiccation. Desiccation basically means you got some thinning of the disc. Uh, just maintain good posture. Keep a strong core. Uh, 
And uh, basically, you know, you, you just need to stay active. Don't worry so much about that. Uh, possibly it could be sacroiliacs. Uh, but generally when you have a straightening of the curve, that indicates a posterior pelvic tilt. Okay, let's talk about that real quick just to give you a quick insight. When the, if you have an increased lumbar lordosis like this or increases like this, generally we have anterior pelvic tilt. If this uh, pelvic goes backwards, the curve is lost, and we call it straightening or a hypolordosis, we have posterior pelvic tilt. Go see my exercises on posterior pelvic tilt. I think that will help you out there. Uh, Catherine, uh, let's see here, product called Joy Seat Help, kind of lifting the tailbone when sitting, supposed to place on a chair seat. Yes, I've seen those, and I guess if it works, go for it. Uh, Jeff, how to strengthen the last muscle you were showing to stretch. Uh, we don't have to worry about that, but we mentioned. Uh, I'm going to kind of move up here. Uh, thoracic disc, we'll talk on another one. Carthic back posture was the main reason why you got a herniated disc in the first place. You are correct. I can agree with you there. Uh, piriformis stretches, we talked about that. What causes herniations? Increased stress on a disc. Load. Uh, basically from improper posture. But again, if you are leaning forward, okay, let's watch here. If I have tight hamstrings, hamstrings be behind my thigh, I'm standing up, and as I lean forward, my hamstrings, let, let's say they lock out. Now they're locking out. They cannot move anymore. Guess what? The lower back has to work harder. My upper torso is coming so far anterior, just like an anterior pelvic tilt, I'm going to say, just like an anterior forward head, but obviously this is worse now because we have all this extra weight of our upper torso. So generally this is wrong. I've seen more people cough in a bending position going forward, people picking up a pencil off the floor, picking up a tooth, their toothbrush, and bam, jam, they're hurting for a long time. So uh, you got to make sure that if you're going to lean forward, you want to arch the back like this. Okay, stick the butt out. Let me see if I get, get in the camera. Stick the butt out, arch the back, and do it this way. Bend from the knees. When you arch the back like this, okay, when you arch the back like this, what you're doing is you're taking the whole upper torso up in here, okay, and you're equally distributing it along the lower back versus bending from the lower back like this. Watch what happens. All the load is right here, right where my hand is at. This whole upper torso is pulling this area right here where my hand is, and wham, you're going to hurt the disc and you're gonna cause a lot of potential problems. So, I just did a video recently about sneezing. I've seen more people hurt their back sneezing, so the correct way to sneeze is this way, believe it or not. Lean back when you sneeze. Most people go forward because the abs contract pulling you forward, and when it pulls you forward, I just showed you the wrong position to be in. That's how you hurt your back. Now when you sneeze, you are increasing the intradiscal pressure as well. Okay, let me go ahead and try to catch up on a few of these right here before we get off the year, because it is getting late here, and they go constant. This goes very quick here. Uh, let's go, Shaki. Uh, bulging disc. Uh, how should you sleep on a hard or soft bed? Bulging disc, normal disc, herniated disc. Always stay on something firm. They've done studies sleeping on the floor is better than being on a bed. I'm not going to tell you to sleep on a floor because I don't sleep on the floor. But if you're going to sleep, the correct position, and you know, I think the next, I think the next video is we'll, we'll do it on sleeping because that's a biggie. And I've got a lot of great material, a lot of great videos on our on our uh, program uh, on my on my channel on sleeping. Uh, they seem to get hit a real lot. But sleeping on your back or side pillow be underneath the knees if you're on your back, pillow between the knees if you're on your side. Preferably most important thing on sleeping is make sure that the spine stays in line, okay? If you're sleeping on a pillow too high, your head goes up. Too low, your head goes down. Um, and the purpose of bending the knees is that it relaxes the muscles in the lower back, opens up the hole where the nerve comes out of and, and allows that area to function the, at, at its best. Now, sleeping on your stomach, the problem with that is you've got to turn your head left or right. Not good. You put pressure on the ribs, limits inspiration, limits oxygen, and it as well as puts a lot of pressure into the into the organs as well. Uh, so some people love sleeping on their stomach, but not good for you. Okay, uh, pillows for sleeping. No magic pillow. Uh, any pillow that keeps the head in line is, is great. I always recommend a firm, uh, uh, more on the firmer side. Doesn't have to be hard, but more on the firmer side. Kevin, uh, sacroiliac frozen on the right for a long time. Also have necrosis. 
which is obviously some lack of blood circulation of the area, and both femoral heads will exercise as high shear and yet sacral leg joint gets some relief. Absolutely. When you do these exercises, do them slow, feel your body, let it tell you what you can do. No doctor is going to tell you, stop there. Do what you feel you can do and go for it. You know, I think that's my best advice for you is don't be afraid to, to don't be timid. Listen to your body. Your body will actually tell you what you can and cannot do. Okay. Uh, from Canada, is yoga indicated for lumbar disc herniations? Go for it. Absolutely. Yoga is great. I've done yoga for a long time. I'm not doing it now and I really should be. Um, but uh, yoga, understand people, there's different kinds of yoga. There's yoga that's more uh, serene, and there's other types of yoga that are much more vigorous. So um, I do recommend anyone who gets into a yoga pr program, uh, do it you know, at a pace that you can handle. I think that's very, very important. I'm going to try to fix this for me because my camera is driving me crazy here. Bear with me, guys. Uh, let's see what we can do. Okay. So from that perspective, I think it's a good thing. Um, let's talk about, uh, let's see, how to sit. Uh, like I told you, get a support behind your lower back. I could do a whole, do another program on sitting. I have some great information videos on sitting. Uh, you have a lumbar disc herniation, free running from Canada. Uh, what does it mean when the pain moves from the buttocks to the toes, big toe? Uh, that's old sciatica. Uh, we look at sciatica. Okay, let's see if I can pull it up for you. And I can get rid of the other ones here. If you look on that bottom left there, that is sciatica. You see where the nerve comes off the lower lumbar area? Makes up five, five lumbar nerves, L4, L5. And the first three sacral, sacral nerves, nerves makes up that, that big fat nerve, goes down the, the back of the leg uh, and the side of the leg and to the big toe area. Most people who have problems into the leg doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have pain in the lower back. But that's generally the causation of where it's coming from. So uh, sciatica is something that uh, a lot of things can be caused from piriformis syndrome, sacroiliac, as well as lumbar disc herniations, or bulging disc, or actually disc degeneration. Uh, last uh, night, I believe, we did uh, a lot of uh, great, we had a great topic on disc degeneration, um, and that was actually a great response, great turnout, and, and you can look at those videos right now, they're on my channel, as YouTube has posted those videos right after. Um, okay, just a couple more questions before we get out of here because time is moving here. Uh, let's see what we hear. You got hurt in the gym while doing leg presses. Uh, there is pain in your left last rib with the same region extending to the back area. Well, hopefully it's just muscle. Uh, I just want to let everyone know one thing. Whenever you hurt yourself, always ice the first uh, 24 to 36 hours. Guys, write this down, okay? Let's see if I can type it for you. It's an easy one, all right? P R I C E. All right. First thing we're going to look at P. P is, uh, let's see, protect the area. All right. Obviously, R is rest. E is elev uh, I is ice. C is compression. Uh, let's see. Protection. Let me see. Let's do rice. All right. Rice, uh, rest, ice, compression, elevation. Basically, what we want to do is that you want to protect the area, you want to rest the area, you want to ice the area, you want to compress the area, and you want to elevate the area. If you can elevate anything above the heart, like your arm or something, your leg, it's good. Uh, but the first 24, 36 hours, use ice, put a paper towel over the ice pack, and put it on the area. Use ice several times a day. After you know, 36, 48 hours, start using moist heat. Moist heat is better than regular heat. It penetrates deeper. Uh, use it about 20, 30 minutes. Don't sleep with it. Uh, very, very effective. Use some moist tea down there, uh, and I think that hopefully should help you out and help that area heal. Um, last couple questions, and I think we're going to make our way out. Uh, last couple questions, if you want to go ahead and throw them out at me. I know I skipped over a lot of you guys up there from the top because I got a lot of questions coming through here. Uh, the piriformis stretches, I think, are great. I'd like you to continue to do that. Um, this is Karthik. I don't know if he's still here. You're a true motivator for me. I am actually well on my way towards curing my herniated disc. I did have a herniation of 7.5 millimeters between L4 and L5 and a severe case of sciatica on your left side. Continue those great exercises. Alvina, uh, you're there. As I said, you were beautiful last night. I think you're beautiful today. Um, 
Um, I'm sure some of you people did leave messages. You're going to look at the video after. I understand you cannot all be up at this time. Uh, here you are, Gary, Dr. Alan Mandel. I have two herniated discs. Can I do some weight exercises? I like bench pressing or whatever in the gym. As long as you can work around these disc problems and be smart, a person with uh, disc conditions with the lower back, I don't recommend heavy squatting. I don't recommend heavy loads on the disc. Uh, if you're going to do something, you've got to use wise decisions. Let's take our last comment here. Uh, Varma, how do you correct your hip tilt due to the left due to pain in the lower back with L4, L5 herniation? Hip moves left uh, if the pain gets worse and centralizes if no pain. Well, uh, most of all, when you look at uh, pelvic tilt, uh, a lot of things can cause pelvic tilt. So just by looking at a pelvic tilt, I want you to know that you can be pronated from the feet. Uh, if you look at your shoes. Guys, eh, girls, everyone look at your shoes. See if you're wearing the outside of your heels. If you're wearing out the outside of your heels, then you are potentially pronated where your arches have dropped down. When you're dropped down, the knees internally rotate, affects the hips. A lot of pelvic imbalance comes from your shoes, the way you're walking. If you've had some chronic knee problems, maybe some burning, some plantar fasciitis, fasciitis under the foot, uh, or potential problems in the foot or ankle or knees, that can be the primary contributor to pelvic problems. So first thing I'll tell you to do, uh, Varma, is look at your, your feet because chronic lower back problems can be coming from the pedal foundation from pronation of the feet. Very important, make sure you have good support in your shoes. Uh, I do have quite a few different exercises on uh, pelvic instability. I actually have some exercises you can do to help that on my channel, so why don't you go through that as well. So um, I think we're going to uh, make our way out. We'll continue to uh, throw these notifications out at you because I do these last minute. I enjoy doing this. I get lots of great feedback. I ask you to go to my Facebook channel if you like to throw me questions. I know a lot of people trying to get a hold of me. I get anywhere from 300 to 500 emails a day. That's correct, a day through YouTube, and I cannot go through all those emails. But uh, I try to make you VIPs people that if you have problems, motivational doc uh, on my Facebook um, I am finished trying to work on the Motivational Doc uh, website. We do have it up, although I'm not pushing that right now until we complete that. But if you want to ask me a question, Motivational Doc on my Facebook, go ahead and uh, like it uh, and share it with your friends because if we can really get people together in that thing, that's a real simple thing that everyone knows about. Uh, um, you are, yeah, you want me to go? I haven't done Facebook Live yet. Uh, I guess I'll have to try it out. I haven't done it. Uh, Jose from Brazil, what do you think about running long distance? 10 kilometers, 5 minute kilometers can damage the body structure or can we do this in a safe way? Uh, most important are your shoes. Most important is supporting that arch. Uh, again, keeping weight down. Um, yes, pounding. Uh, pounding does put a burden on the neck area. I've had a lot of cases come across uh, with disc problems in the neck. Uh, but again, you know, a lot of it is luckiness, geneticness. A lot of it is your is your 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 heel, foot, uh, the way you come down, the way your gait is. Uh, some people are just blessed on running; they run their whole life, and never have a problem. Um, I don't really have a problem on running. Um, all I would recommend to do, most important, is try to absorb shock. I like to wear two socks. Uh, if you can jog on something that's not always hard surface, more tr uh, of a harder grass or something that's better. The, the, the more you can protect the body from shock, the, the longer that you're going to go on that. Uh, more people waiting on Facebook, Doc. You are great. Thank you very much. Which test do you recommend to identify herniated discs? Uh, X-ray. Good, good question, by the way, Rav. By the way, MRIs are the way to determine if you have a herniated disc. Okay. Uh, I did post this. I know a lot of you came in here late, uh, but uh, if I show you... This particular uh, lumbar herniated disc of an MRI, and I show you that. Look on the, at the left side. That's a herniated disc. An X-ray will not show a herniated disc. An X-ray is going to show hard tissue only. An MRI will show soft tissue, and that's very, very important. Okay, um, that is about it, and I'm sure that we're going to have to move out. Um, I just want to let you know, 
Guys, do that piriformis stretch that you saw me do earlier. If you have questions, if you not if you not see this whole video, go back to YouTube on my channel, uh, and it will show you lots what you have not seen. These things have been really good. I really enjoy doing these live things. These are the most interactive. These kind of videos are the most helpful for you. This is like kind of being in school. This is good for me. It refreshes my mind, my memory. It brings us together. It's all about love, people. It's all about helping each other. Um, I grew up in the motivational end uh, before I got even into involved in all this educational end. But I love to educate. I love to motivate. And part of motivation is just having faith. And I really wish the blessings for all my listeners out there, my subscribers. I ask you to share this channel, uh, like, sub be, uh, continue to subscribe, uh, and share it on your YouTube. Share it on your social media. Let people know uh, we're over a thousand videos here. And I tell you, I don't believe that there's another channel that is 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 concrete and is right on when it comes to self-help because this is all about helping ourselves keeping money in your pocket instead of going to doctors taking your money to try to do things first on our own to have responsibility to learn how to take care of ourselves and that is what it's all about it's having responsibility to learn to take the best care of ourselves we need to be in control all the time okay uh, sir, I will answer if I send my MRI. You send your MRI report. Okay, just send the report and I'll just look to give you my opinion what the radiologist says and what it means. Um, I really don't have the time to go through all the MRI's reports. I get a lot of stuff and I'm doing these as well, but whatever I can do to help, I will. Okay, guys, uh, God bless you. I ask you to, to share all my videos. Uh, do what you want. Post my videos on your Facebook. Do whatever you want. I've and I'm getting you know, lots of corporations calling me up, people overseas. Can they use my videos on their sites? Use them. Take my videos. Use them. That's what it's for. It's all about education. I'm an easy guy, and it's all about helping lives, particularly those people who don't have the medical, uh, uh, don't have that medical around them that's easy for them to get to. So, uh, unfortunately, people need to become educated because they don't have the medical in their backyard. Anyways, God bless, guys. Thank you for listening, and we will be back real soon again. God bless.